certainly getting on with the job and despite you know a number of these activists the protesters have targeted the, the know, Westpac Bank, Bank in Brisbane. If that Adani mine goes ahead, it's going to be devastating. It'll destroy the Galilee Basin. It would totally shatter any chances of keeping global warming to a safe level. Our government cannot be trusted with the environment. It's cold. Why would you, as a senior politician in Australia, encourage people to do the complete opposite to what every scientist is advising us to do? Who actually thinks this Adani mine should go ahead? No, no, no nothing. Thousands of people have protested across Australia. We've made stopping Adani the biggest climate campaign in Australia's history. We are warriors in the effort to defend our rights. We're not going to give up. We've slowed them down for 10 years. Like, what we're doing is working. The Galilee coal is still in the ground. Thanks to grassroots action, there's still been no coal dug. In 2010, multiple coal giants were seeking access to the Galilee Basin coal deposits in remote central Queensland on Wangan and Jangalingu country, with nine mega coal mines planned, the biggest in Australian history. In a few years, they intended to start shipping millions of tonnes of coal out through the Great Barrier Reef. Coal mining barons like Clive Palmer and Gina Reinhardt considered the cost of getting coal to the coast as prohibitively expensive. But if Adani built the railway, that would open the Galilee Basin for other coal giants to follow. So the Galilee Basin is one of the largest untapped coal reserves on the planet. If it was dug up and burnt, it would totally shatter any chances of keeping global warming to a safe level. Adani's mine has become an icon for everything that is wrong about the politics of coal in Australia. But it is just one part of a much bigger problem. Australia is the biggest coal exporter in the world. The carbon emissions from burning the coal Australia exports is about double Australia's total domestic emissions from every source. Mining and burning coal is the biggest contributor to the climate emergency that increases in severity with each passing year. With temperatures rising to dangerous levels, extreme weather events have become much more frequent, including floods, droughts, and multiple mass coral reef bleachings. For most Australians, the worsening crisis became inescapable during the devastating fires last summer. But coal companies retain immense power over Australian politics. And the forces blocking that transition to safe, renewable energy are formidable. But if we could stop a new coal basin from being exploited, we could start to build the power to take on the other coal giants and fight alongside communities for a transition plan that doesn't leave a single worker behind. Adrian Burragabra here, I'm a traditional owner, originally from the country of the, the Wangan. My father and grandfather and great-grandfather come from that area, and the Jagalingu is Galilee Basin. What was once known as a, a beautiful, pristine area, uh, sacred to us, especially the Dumbulla Springs, associated with our law and custom, won't be recognisable. This mine goes ahead, we will be suffering for generations to come. It will damage the waterways, it will damage the aquifers and fracture the whole ecosystem. Last year, the Wangan Jagalinga Family Council, around August, went onto the area of unallocated state land and performed ceremony, paid respects to our ancestors, and we made peace with the land. And then as we were leaving, Adani's operatives and their workers tried to stop us. They said, well, this is Adani's property. We said, well, this is a sacred site. We can come back here and practice our culture anytime we like. And so Adani went to the Supreme Court and successfully took out a restraining order against my son, Cody, and me. 
We are warriors in the effort to defend our rights, our right to be people, our right to practice our law and custom and language and practice our totems and, and, and practice our stories. This is who we are as a people. You know, to fight a mining company like Adani, we really need to equip ourselves with all the tactics and all the strategies, you know, that, that we can mount to stop a project like this. We did conduct several court cases. We launched a Defence of Country campaign, which took us to several places in the world, explaining our story, telling our banks, telling other Indigenous people in the world about our plight and the fight that we have. We continue to fight against this project. We're not going to cower and we're not going to run away and we're not going to be afraid that there is a fight. And we're not going to give up because there's so much more to fight for and it's our future for all of us. An alliance began to emerge to defend the Galilee from the coal giants, starting with the traditional owners defending their right to land and culture, farmers defending water and biodiversity, tourism operators defending the Great Barrier Reef, and local communities all around Australia defending their future. This is how easy it is to stop the coal trains. Coal is just, it's just got to go. I'm a coral reef ecologist, so over the decades I've seen some of the most spectacular places on the planet, but I've watched in horror as climate change has caused massive coral reef bleachings. When I heard that Adani was planning to build one of the biggest coal mines in the world, I was outraged. So I started getting involved in the Stop Adani campaign. The Stop Adani movement started out with just a few people and then a few local groups. And now we've got more than a hundred local Stop Adani groups in communities right across Australia. But we knew we'd need more than numbers. We had to be strategic. We started approaching the companies that Adani would need to dig its mine. Protesters have targeted the Westpac Bank in Brisbane. Like banks, insurers and contractors. Telling the bank to give no money to Adani's coal mine. Woo! We pointed out the hypocrisy of building Adani's massive coal mine when these companies say they're committed to solving climate change, protecting the environment and to Indigenous rights. We made sure we were everywhere. Stop, Adani, stop, stop, Adani. It's a terrible corporate decision and there's huge reputational risk in enabling such a destructive project. Many of the staff were horrified their companies were working for Adani. So many of them ended up demanding that their companies ruled out working for Adani. With people power cutting off the options for private finance, Adani sought to take advantage of their close relationships with major political parties, to access public money to build the coal mine and railway infrastructure, including a billion dollar federal government loan. But after years of grassroots actions, Adani's billion dollar loan was vetoed. Is that I have vetoed the loan. Dozens of the world's most powerful financial and insurance institutions have ruled out the Adani Carmichael coal mine. Now more than 75 companies have ruled out working for Adani. Including Adani's longest running contractor, the engineering giant GHD. But the fight is far from over. In 2018, Adani announced they would spend their own money on the mine and railway construction. We do not require a cent of state or federal funding. We will stand alone. We are standing on our own two feet. We've secured finance. We are starting the mine. With Adani's plans pushed back year after year, Adani's debts are rising with the project becoming more and more financially risky. In response, Adani has sought every tool at their disposal to try and force the project through, using the legal system to silence critics, 
and bankrupt opponents in court, using the power of the Murdoch media to attack climate activists, and using the power of the government to weaken environmental protections and outlaw legitimate climate activism. The claws of the fossil fuel industry are still dug into our whole political system. I think it's really hard to tell where the difference is between be it federal or Queensland government and the fossil fuel industry. My wealth's $4,000 million. Do you think I give a stuff? Of the millions donated to the major political parties by the fossil fuel industry during the 2019 federal election, Adani's donations were some of the largest, with almost $250,000 going to the Liberal and National parties. Just days before the elections, Adani's final environmental approvals were rushed through, despite contestation from the relevant scientific bodies. And last summer, as much of Australia burned, Adani's machines began clearing land, destroying precious habitat of endangered wildlife like the black-throated finch. Every decision that is made about the future of this country is driven by the agenda of a dying fossil fuel industry that's trying to wring every last cent out of our communities. We need an absolute radical shift right now. We need people to be taking action and we need people to be stepping out of their boundaries of comfort, um, out of what they thought they could previously do before. And that's what drives people to the front lines to take direct action. I realised that it was going to take people to actually stop this project. N Nonviolent direct action is intervention. So it's actually about standing in the way of the injustice or the destruction that's happening. The Australian Medical Association has declared a climate emergency. Emergencies require emergency action. Now you're under arrest for trespass, OK? So take your camera off, take your, you're, you're in custody. Take your camera off. The bushfire last summer was really yet another wake-up call, I think, for, for many people in Australia. Fuck! Fucking just fuck the houses, man. Get into the water. It's chaos. They were devastating and destructive. But I also think at the same time it helped to galvanise people as people saw firsthand the destructive force of climate change and really demonstrated why it is so important for us to join uh, the movement fighting for, for a safer future. So our campaign strategy is really focusing on making sure that Adani doesn't get any insurance. We know that there are just a handful of insurance companies that are even willing to touch Adani. They all know it's a very risky project. I think it's really having an effect. Marsh, which is the biggest corporate insurance broker in the world, announced their first climate policy uh, ever in May 2020. Well, welcome to Stop Adani's first ever online rally. The strategy to target these companies can still be really effective online. Even once a project gets underway, they can still be stopped and because there's just so much pressure on the project. Adani is like a house of cards. We, we are chipping away at their pillars of support one by one. And it might just, might not be today, might not be tomorrow, but we think that, you know, in the near future, we're going to stop this project. The Galilee Basin is a gigantic resource to burn and pollute the planet and kill animals. There's got to be a simpler, better way. And someone's already come up with that. And that's renewable energy. And that's the way forward for First Nations people and for all of us. Being in a community of like-minded people who have a common goal and who are fighting for the planet that they love is the most fulfilling and hopeful thing that I can be a part of. I truly believe that action is the best remedy for despair. There's been huge wins in this campaign from stopping those coal ports to forcing coal dredging out of the reef. People Power has stopped this mine for 10 years and People Power is the only thing that we ever will stop this mine from finally going ahead. If we hadn't stood in the way of Adani's plans, they and the other coal giants would have been digging up Galilee coal years ago. They'd have already shipped over 100 million tonnes out through the Great Barrier Reef and burnt it. But because of thousands of ordinary people, 
taking extraordinary action, the Galilee coal is still in the ground. And every day that it stays there, the viability of Adani's project looks more and more shaky. To make sure we get there, we will continue to confront any companies considering lending to or insuring Adani's coal operations. Expose the injustices perpetrated by the Adani Group on Indigenous communities in Australia and the people living beside coal power plants in India where Adani wants to burn the Galilee coal. But with 60 more coal projects proposed across Australia and the Morrison government backing a gas-fired recovery from the COVID pandemic, we need all hands on deck. Together, we will stop Adani and move Australia beyond coal. Coal mine that's gonna devastate us.